Ecology and Library New Protocol for Internet uh, Storage, Distributed, Decentralized, all the good stuff. Um, okay, so let's, yeah, let's just dive right into where we're going with this. Lex, w what are your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Or, well, Natalie. Yeah, Go sure. Ahead. Well, so I would say that um, a good place to start would probably be to talk about the uh, protocol. Uh, I can hold my own in a conversation about the protocol, uh -huh. but if Jack is on the line, I think it would be pretty dumb for me to be the person uh, to do that. Um, so, Jack, are you still here with us? Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's a little tough to listen to. It's yeah, working, but it's kind of muffled. I mean, I could hear Natalie really well. Maybe she, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about now? I'm okay, that's to it. Hopefully. Okay, that yeah, that is much better. better. Yeah. So why don't you just sort of like like open us up here and um, give everybody a sense for uh, you know what happened, sort of the fork from Bitcoin and you know what the protocol is all about, and then you know I'll sort of take it. Um, you know, after we've had some conversation about that, uh, with uh, discussion about the app and, and what our plans for the future are, does that sound like a good idea? Sure. So awesome. Uh, well, so I guess that uh, I guess we should be detailed here. So, uh, library is uh, based on a blockchain, which was uh, it's derived from a fork of Bitcoin. Um, and what is uh, significantly different about it is that it has a way to store uh, what are called claims. Um, which are uh, associations. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on. This is since this is an intro video for anybody watching this. Would you mind if you back up just a step and talk? So you're, we're getting into the technology of what's behind it, but let's give people a, an overview from a higher, bigger perspective, more general. Just just a brief note on that. Like, okay. Uh, you know, in one sentence, it's you know YouTube on the blockchain. But, okay. Uh, it's <laughs> actually much more broad than that. So, you know, but that's like the use case, you know, that we're going after primarily at this point. So, uh, okay. Okay. You know. That's, that's a, that's a good one liner. I understand that. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, where should we go from there? Yeah. Yeah. So well, would you like, would you like to continue with like a broader level? I really find, um, in having this conversation that it, it makes a lot of sense to talk about the protocol, uh, first, because then, uh, you're able to get into, you know, speech, um, which is basically, you know, to oversimplify an imager, um, decentralized on the blockchain, uh, and then, you know, talk about the library app, um, which, okay. as Jack uh, so succinctly pointed out, is YouTube on the blockchain. Um, you're able to get into those two things, and when you're talking about the uh, sort of greater possibilities, um, and you already have the groundwork of the understanding of the protocol um, laid, it just makes it a lot easier moving forward. Uh, yeah, sounds great to me. Cool. So, Jack, why don't you uh, take, it, take it back, buddy, and uh, give us a sense for the protocol, and then we'll talk about how the app uh, resolves from that and all of the amazing opportunities uh, that Library presents. So, um, yeah, uh, what happens in Library is that we make an association between a human recognizable name, uh, like uh, the name It's a Disaster, uh, you know, a movie by Oscilloscope, um, and we link that to some metadata, which uh, is information about uh, what's in it, it's like the description, the author, this type of information. And also, uh, it provides a link to uh, download basically uh, the head piece of a file stream for it. So um, you have this human recognizable name, uh, which, you know, resolves into a downloadable file stream, which is like analogous to magnet link, kind of. Um, the download protocol is fairly similar to BitTorrent. So, um, yeah, it allows people to, you know, publish and for it to be accessed, uh, but without having like ugly hashes uh, in the names. So, um, basically, uh, let's see, library protocol, um, it comprises of like a peer to peer network where uh, peers are sharing uh, blobs, which are chunks of data, which are fragments of these streams. Um, and uh, this is like a separate network that exists, you know, below the blockchain. So um, you're doing sort of domain resolution on the blockchain and then downloading content out of a peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, so, uh, yeah, then around that, there's, a, you know, a sort of a small ecosystem at this point of, you know, the app, which provides uh, a way to publish 
to that network as well as download stuff. Um, and then there's also uh, Speech. The app is you know for desktops. Uh, Speech is a mobile accessible website uh, that lets you do the same types of things as in the app. Uh, not quite all of them, but you can you know watch free things and publish things. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're is this storage to... happening on individual computers, or is are there central servers? Well, there's not you know there's not enough hosts at this point. So we are you know one of the hosts that's hosting a lot of data, but. Uh, that's not a necessity that you can host your own data and we encourage you to. So, uh, yeah, and people are hosting whatever they download. So, I'll just add one more thing. So right now we have our own distributed network, uh, but we are actually looking at adding BitTorrent and, and maybe some others, right, Jack? Uh, so, yeah. so the point of the, the, uh, the value that library adds is the um, discovery part, right? So we've had BitTorrent for a long time. But it's really hard to find the torrents that you want to download. So library, the library adds the, the discovery part, and then also it comes with its own distributed file system. Uh, but that's kind of uh, that's not a required. They're not tightly coupled. We can add other distributed. So like we can add BitTorrent as one of the options, or maybe some other better thing that comes along later. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, because the file stream is just being pointed to by a hash. Uh, so it's, it's very similar to a magnet link, except in the case of a magnet link, you need to know that whole hash in order to use it. Whereas in order to access a stream on the uh, library peer-to-peer -peer network, you need to know only the uh, short name that it's claimed with. Um, so yeah, but the type of source that is associated to a claim is arbitrary. So we can support uh, BitTorrent streams or you know, normal HTTP streams to download you know, from an actual URL. Um, as well as you know any other uh, file transfer tr file transfer protocol. So. Mm -hmm. And then and then the other point that makes it relevant to OSC is that everything is 100% open source. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's all on GitHub. So. Excellent. Is uh, uh is there a re revenue model of some sort with this? Like, what's what are you guys looking at for? For that. Well, so fellas, if you want, I can take over at this point and, and, and get in a little bit about some of that kind of stuff. I think that's um, a good opportunity for me to do so. You good with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go with it. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is actually my favorite part of this conversation. People ask this question, you know, oh, well, how, how do you guys make money? And it's like, no, 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 let's backtrack a little bit because we said decentralized YouTube. Um, when you talk about centralization and the way that YouTube uh, makes money off of the content that creators are putting on uh, the platform, uh, you know, what you're pointing to is sort of this um, tale as old as time, very passive, you know, the really, uh, the dude with the really big box uh, and, you know, the corporation behind it says, here, put all your content in this box and just let it live here. And uh, advertiser gonna, uh, advertisers are going to pay us tons and tons of money. Um, to put their ads, uh, you know, in around in the middle of sometimes the content that you put here, and we're basically going to farm your your content. Your your content's going to live like a like a fruit tree or a cow or something like that that just keeps paying us and paying us, and it's always trapped behind these gates and doesn't really belong to you forever. Um, uh, and there's there's their revenue model, right? Mm -hmm. This is really crappy for creators, though. And at the end of the day, you know, if I'm talking to a room full of, uh, you know, developers, engineers, and otherwise, um, you know, creative people who build things, you know that if a pig is unhappy, it will give you bacon, but the bacon won't be as good as the big, fat, happy pig that was allowed to do whatever it wants. Likewise, um, the developer, the creator, the marketing professional, whoever it is, is happy and is allowed to sort of um, allow their creative passions to follow a flow that feels very natural to get to them and organically progressive. Um, you know they're going to they're going to continue to be um, uh, you know uh, to pursue the things that they pursue. Their content should get better. Um, the kinds of partnerships that will form up around their part uh, their passions as they bump into other people uh, who share similar passions. You know those will naturally form. Um, more creative works will come out of that, and so on. Um, whereas uh, you know with YouTube, uh, again with this very passive sort of way of uh, you know, uh, creators uh, being able to utilize their content. I mean, they can't monetize it. They can't do anything with it, but put it there and then maybe promote it uh, via link sharing. Um, you know, uh, in this way, they're very cut off from anything other than learning how to game the advertisement system such that advertisers, the algorithms that decide 
what's good or not. Um, you know, we'll stick advertisements there and, and they will, uh, you know, make money. And then there are partnership programs and things of that nature, which we won't get into, um, but allow them to sort of toe the, the company line, um, get, you know, right in line, uh, you know, the sort of uh, the, you know, corporate, uh, you know, company line and just sort of toe it. Um, whereas the, the uh, opportunity that is presented with the decentralization of that kind of platform um, and the introduction of a coin market, you know, sort of a natural ecosystem of money around utility of uh, you know the platform and the coin uh, that is uh, you know active as a part of it um, is as follows the creator comes to library with their content they put it there lots and lots of creators come with their content they put it there as they bring their followers there their subscribers there and people say ah this content is good I like this content utilize some of the features that are in place or are being built um, and will be uh, implemented in the, the uh, coming future, uh, uh, not too distant future, things like commenting features, subscriptions, which we already have the ability uh, to tip, um, which is to say content is free, but you just really liked it, and so you tip the creator um, tip. with your wallet. Yep, go ahead. You can already tip. No, I know that. Yeah, I'm saying some of, some of these features are not in place. Some of these are. Um, the ability to subscribe is in place. The ability to comment, uh, we're working on. Um, the ability to uh, to tip is in place and utilized. Uh, you know, the ability to monetize, you know, to set a price for a piece of content um, is in place. Uh, so a lot of really cool features in place. But people come, they see the content. Um, you know, they they've got money in their wallet. They're using it to tip um, and support creators that they like. Um, you know, as a part of uh, you know how we are uh, courting certain uh, kinds of YouTubers. Um, we are paying, you know, sometimes small amount of money, sometimes large amounts of LPC to have people come over and, and bring their projects here. But what you see is an ecosystem that is built on content and content creator freedom, um, which has an interesting effect for all of us. A, um, you know, it drives the price up. Um, and uh, that is uh, what we have been, uh, you know, basically uh, utilizing as a means to keep our project uh, funded, which has been wildly successful, and we're all very happy for it. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, B, again, you know, price going up because of the creator contribution means that the money that they're being paid by us, um, you know, the LBC that they've been given by us, the LBC that they've bought if they just wanted to, uh, which they certainly can, uh, the LBC that they are tipped or paid, uh, by the community of people who are, uh, you know, viewing their content and so on, um, it becomes uh, uh, more valuable. So the creator is not coming and sticking their content somewhere and then passively, you know, driving people there and hoping they'll come and watch it. Everybody is participating and incentivized in a way that is building a community up where everybody's getting paid, nobody's getting a haircut, and the creator is allowed to sort of follow their passion. Um, and, uh, you know, do whatever it is that drives more viewers who see actual value in their content, which is what makes that, you know, fills their coffers as opposed to uh, creating content for advertiser uh, dollars. So it is, it is a, a truly a, a little mini content market, um, you know, aside from like the larger, you know, media market that exists in the world. But in this corner of the world, um, you know, the publisher experience is, um, you know, truly valued and everyone is... Um, you know, their, their true incentive, the way that they are, um, uh, you know, truly incentivized to behave in this ecosystem is, is always, you know, good for the goose and gander. So everybody's making money and, uh, you know, nobody's, uh, nobody's losing out, really. LBC light Bitcoin, sorry, local Bitcoin? Yeah, so, I mean, LBC is our, is our coin, um, you know, so we're a fork from Bitcoin, so it's the same principle. We're, we're a company that's, uh, you know, utilizing the blockchain oh. um, with, as uh, Jack pointed out, the really interesting, uh, you know, development that uh, we, we our, have the ability to sort of... Yeah, and our code is forked from Bitcoin, but we are not operating on a fork of Bitcoin. That we right, we, own, we're we on our own, own blockchain. To, yeah, but our code forked from, uh, yeah, the official branch of Bitcoin, you know, like about two years ago, so... Right. So same principle, but we're on our own blockchain, which is why we've got our own coin, which is LBC, library credits. Okay. So that's that's already, is LBC already got value that you can redeem through other platforms? I mean, that's, do you get paid in LBCs or that's people, how, tell me more about that. How, how do people uh, interact with LBC? LBC uh, so can be shape shifted into, uh, you know, a wide variety of other uh, cryptocurrencies. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. And it's also on exchange, so you can buy oh, it USD or sell it for like finance and uh, all the rest of those exchanges kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that is that how you guys I get? Know. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Do you guys know which which exchanges we're on? Um, so we're on. Um, uh, what are we on? So we are on. We're Coinomi. We're uh, Bitrex. We're a couple of what is it, a crypto? Um, oh god. We're on like five exchanges. That's pretty cool. Okay. Oh man, this is actually that is a question that I should, off the top of my head, know the answer to. But you, um, you can, uh, I will actually, I'll get links to you, um, you know, to sort of point you in the direction uh, if you'd like later of, of places that you could take a look at it. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, the coin has been performing well. Obviously, the last couple of weeks have been pretty tragic for everybody um, in the community, um, depending on on what your attitude is. Um, you know, some of us see sales, other of us are, you know, crying in our pillows at night. I'm feeling pretty good, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's performed pretty well for us and you know it definitely enabled us um to fund the project um you know and and add to the team um you know and i mean we've got lots and lots of run at that and you know we've been able to avoid sort of the vc dollar effect where we're beholden to people who don't necessarily understand what it is that we're trying to do here and yeah. are not participating um you know from a, de- a development uh, uh, standpoint on the project so it's been able to sort of like keep a pure focus yeah, yeah. Um, for all of us here how long how long have you guys been around now i mean when um, did you well, start the, the project maybe library from like from ideas on the now i mean keywords started breaking what like 18 months ago jack uh the very beginning i mean like the very very first work began probably at the end of 2015 and mm-hmm. then you know mostly into 2016 yeah. So for the novice, can you explain? So how do you do this? So you actually did you do something like an ICO? We did no, not. We never did. No. So tell t- tell us maybe a little bit for the novice, like you know. So you you guys basically came up with a project, you coined your own money, and there you go, you get paid. Tell us more about it. Yeah, it is. Um, this is this is sort of an important distinction to be made. You know, in the beginning of a company um, such as Library, you know, what you've got is a couple of programmers looking at each other in the face, being like, "I don't know, dude. What do you think? You want to do it?" And there's maybe a napkin involved, but I think that's probably a fallacy at this point. Something <laughs> that we all saw in a movie that we keep saying. Um, I think it was probably like what a Reddit DM or something, <laughs> um, or or whatever. Um, you know, our our. Uh, founders, um, you know, are, are all developers, but, you know, our CEO, Jeremy, is um, no stranger to startup life. He um, comes from another startup that he successfully launched um, and then, you know, was able to, to, to get running flawlessly and, and left behind in order to start libraries. So he had some experience there. Um, this is working in an extremely different space um, than that, but uh, he knew he had to assemble a team of people who could build this. Um, so he turned to our CTO and his right-hand man, um, who's a really cool guy. His name is Grin. Uh, helped him to build uh, Jeremy's last company, which is called Popscore. Um, and uh, they started, uh, you know, they pulled Jack in, who is someone who I believe um, they both knew independent of one another, possibly. The three of you knew each other, right? No, I, no, I just knew Jeremy. And I knew Jeremy, yeah, through the internet. So. Okay, cool. So you guys knew each other through the internet. And then Josh came on board around the same time. Um, you know, Kay uh, uh, is one of the blockchain developers. He came on. So really, um, you know, and then Riley, who was not a straight up developer, um, you know, he definitely is very tech savvy um, and understands the technology in and out very well. He's also extremely adept when it comes to the crypto markets and, and all of that. Um, but he, he is a, a movie guy. He's a producer. He has um, produced some movies himself. And, you know, he's over in L.A. Um, so they kind of had... The team of uh, core developers here, uh, mostly on the East Coast, actually all on the East Coast at that point in time, um, and then they had um, the uh, the West Coast uh, movie guy who is in Hollywood, and that was kind of the core uh, group that began this. So as it was being built, uh, you know, groundwork was being laid to sort of start talking to YouTubers, start talking to indie film creators uh, and producers 
uh, you know, what's going on uh, in the world of YouTube and how they could effectively pull some of these people onto the library network. And then, you know, as the project uh, became stronger uh, and, you know, the actual uh, app itself was being built off the protocol, um, you know, that was something that was, you know, sort of realized in the first few drips and drafts of people coming onto the network and, you know, uh, manually syncing uh, their content. Uh, but then, you know, that got better and better. Um, uh, which is what brought us to probably late summer, where it became you know, very evident that there was now going to be a need for building out the business team, um, which is when my conversation with Library started, uh, when Brink uh, Slattery, uh, who's a marketing professional here, uh, you know, that conversation started and, and it kind of grew from there. So that's what that's, that's, what that's like. And it, so it's, it's very heavy on the development in the beginning, obviously, and then from there it becomes, okay, Programmers are gods. We all know it. That, that is a tongue-in-cheek remark that points to the um, <laughs> the Silicon Valley uh, tendency to think that way. But it's you know they're, they're building cool stuff. But then past a certain point, you know, it's kind of like okay, maybe we're not the best at selling this, or we don't care for marketing, or whatever. Oh, I guess we need a business team. And yeah. So then, you know that has to happen. Well, tell us tell us more so, about. Is that? A... Nah, man. That, sorry, I, that doesn't that that's cool. But what I. What I'd like to know is, um, I mean, tell me about this. So the, the value generation process, right? So the value, the way you, you kind of like, I mean, it's, you know, the blockchain, that's, you know, it's a revolutionary thing for the world of human economics and so forth. Um, but the thing I, I'm just trying to understand, so, so the value that you actually generate, um, is that coming from... Like how does it? How does it? It's like a chicken and egg argument, right? Like, like where's the initial value come from? So you had no no investors, you had people. Like it kind of grows uh, so by. So we did. We did have. I, I should I should back up and say that we did have a very modest um, investment, mm -hmm. uh, sort of you know towards the, the beginning. Um, you know, in in terms of like you know this world of like ICOs and Lambo cowboys peeling out and and all of that, it was a very modest investment. It was a, a very large investment to the company at the time, just because um, you know, like you said, that early that early generation of value, you know, is always uh, going to be a thing for for any startup. So it definitely you know helped out as far as like helping the business to to mm -hmm. operate. But you know, this definitely was not um, a large investment. It hasn't been something that's you know shaped the company as far as our values or the direction that we've been pointed in. But um, yeah. And from that, so but so from that point, so you, you you've got code popping up, you got a platform for for doing some useful purpose, and then the the like the the money that sustains it right now is that coming from people actually using the space and and buying your coins, or how does how does that work? Um, so do you under um, what is your? And I'm sorry, um, maybe maybe I. Uh, well, no, let me just ask this question. So what is your understanding? Do you feel like you have a pretty uh, good understanding for how, um, you know, the market, the marketplace works? So, you know, for instance, how the, the crypto market works? Um, probably not. No. Okay. No, I mean, no, I always struggle with the idea of, okay, so, so I live in a world of hardware and I, you know, like Lex and I had some of these discussions where I'm saying, okay, but what is the, the substance? Like, for example, like when money was coined in this... Well, let's so let's are take. Are thinking about the utility? No, so we're talking. So, so Jack, I believe the conversation that we're having right now is actually an, a very cool opportunity to explain that there that while there is a utility, um, you know, as far as the coin is concerned, from like a development standpoint, as far as like this is built on this kind of transaction, I think the the greater conversation here that we're having is about monetizing for library, utilizing uh, coin and like. The, okay. the market that is existing. Right. I, I was misunderstanding the question. Yeah. N no. I mean, what what I'm trying to say is like, okay, if you look at money early in history, so this is kind of like a really exploratory conversation on the meaning of money. But but initially, money, I, the way I look at money, or at least how I think history has looked at it, as this was a means of ex means of exchange based on some tangible value behind it, like. Like, for example, you know, you're a producer of something instead of, um, well, at some point you can, ex well, take gold that, you know, say the precious metals say that people didn't want to carry around gold, so they got paper to say, oh, this actually is worth gold or some other resource. So that's where kind of money comes in. And then blockchain is a little different. It's like it's, a theory of money. So, 
what what kind of theory of money? Mining to produce value where people mine Bitcoin and you know, there's only a certain amount of Bitcoin available. Where um, that's what created the value of Bitcoin that it's always going to have a, a by the algorithm always a deterministic amount of value and it's going to be released, you know, at an exponential curve over time and get lo- less and less is going to be released over time as more is mined. It's going to reach the mass. So if this is kind of like how did how does uh, the library yeah. coin like Bitcoin maintain its uh, scarcity and uh, because a blockchain blockchain preserves a ledger and the exchange and makes sure that you truly own what you own. But um, right. how does well, this crypto so keep the, value? The library, uh, yeah, library also has a uh, fixed amount that will be produced. It right. also uses proof of work mining. Um, however, okay. I don't okay. I don't think that actually either of those things are in the in the more abstract economic sense that yeah. you're talking about the uh, the root of the value, I think that that explains uh, cost of production um, and you know the, the way that it like mechanistically works. But uh, huh. you know the reason why people value Bitcoin is because they want to be able to transact in Bitcoin, oh, and in order right. to do that, yeah. they must have Bitcoin. Um, so uh, I think that in that way. Uh, library is actually superior because um, it has the it has a secondary utility aside from being a you know proof of work blockchain based uh, cryptocurrency. In addition to that, um, it supports these other types of transactions for make for taking part in this uh, name resolution yeah. system. So I, that is actually like a secondary utility to your transaction. So not only awesome. you credits, but your you know there's a productive from that wow and that's always so. been a question with like uh you know mining yeah. bitcoin so mars said like with bitcoin people just spend tons of you know energy my energy to provide an entire city you know run an entire city to mine these bitcoins by um calculating frivolous calculations to um slowly release just these bitcoins like the power to power like an entire city will be used to mine these bitcoins but for this what is used to mine. So I'm, I'm sure what you're saying is someone who is uh, providing infrastructure for your coin will be able to, you know, like handling a Bitcoin ledger, you're able to uh, mine and get value by uh, maintaining the exchange and maintaining the uh, name resolution service and uh, finding service, which is super cool. Like it actually gives real meaning. It's doing an actual right, right. productive thing for society. Is um is one of the critiques of Bitcoin is that is it actually doing frivolous stuff or it's actually doing meaningful work of synchronizing an entire ledger? Parts the ledger, parts um you know parts just synchronizing the ledger, but just lots of it is just um you know uh, frivolous calculation as well. So it's um mm-hmm. really cool that this coin is actually linked up to yeah, something yeah. beyond maintaining itself. Yeah, I appreciate so like that part. And it's not going to be as volatile as Bitcoin, kind of you know, immediately from my take on it, because it um, it's tied to a real system. It's always going to have yeah. value added to it, injected to keep constant value, because it's tied to the um, you know, all, all this content being exchanged. Yeah, right. Like I would I would call it like I was asking the question, what's the value backing it? Yes, that that valuable service, like you know, like a piece of paper, money, or or a piece of gold has like potatoes that can be yeah. backed up by here you no, got I mean, a useful you know, any, service any any currency any currencies uh you know in inherent you know or intrinsic value you know is uh you know only exists uh, so far as it can be spent i mean it's it's a transaction that's all you know that's all it is so uh you know when you're looking out at this landscape of things on blockchain you know everything's got to be on blockchain these days you're trying to decipher like what's actually valuable and what has value because people say it has value. Right. Um, you know, it's always going to be utility. Yeah. The yeah. question is, if the question is, can you spend it? The answer is always, uh, if the question is, does it have value? The question is always, can you spend it? You know what I mean? Which is where you get into sort of like the Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash debate where people are like, well, you know, right. which, which, which way do we go? We're at a fork in the road here. Which way do we go? Well, which one can you spend? And, you know, we don't have to answer that question, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Would you no say that? Pump and dump with this. It's, yeah. It's pretty awesome. Would you say that Bitcoin actually right now for that reason is kind of doomed? It's kind of on its way out? Um, I'm confident that it's not going to be 
dissent in Bitcoin. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think never, that... Never bet probably... against Bitcoin. Never bet against yeah, it. We... <laughs> we could, I think that we could probably sit and um, and we could uh, you know debate for days about the markets, especially right now. Um, but what mm-hmm. I would say, you know, my personal feeling, which you know, I by no means you know would I call myself um, an expert or you know label myself you know any kind of crypto expert. But you know the way that I see it, um, the parallels that I draw between the crypto markets and the sort of fiat markets, I guess the regular markets, as mm-hmm. people would say. Um, is that there are a lot of different things that you can do with fiat currency. There are a lot of different classifications, M1, M2, M3. You know, we've got money um, uh, in the, the fiat market that does a lot of different things. And our emotional attachment to it, the way that we spend it, um, view it, save it, don't, invest it, whatever. You know, these are, are all different, uh, you know, kinds of uh, relationships that we've got. Uh, where, you know, in the crypto market, I keep feeling like people are looking at something like Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or you know, whatever else, and they're saying, well, which one is going to be the one? And I think that that's sort of the, there's a bit of fallacy there. I think that that's the wrong way to look at it. I, you know, I agree with Jack, never uh, bid against uh, bid against uh, Bitcoin. And I think that um, that what's going to emerge as this market uh, starts to take shape and, you know, regulation uh, catches up with it and, uh, you know, ICOs change and, you know, Lambo Cowboys become sort of like, um, uh, you know, at least the way that we've seen them, you know, a bit of a passing phase. Um, for for this emerging market, um, I think uh, that we'll start to see that uh, these various coins that have utility and actual people and actual projects uh, behind them, um, you know, they emerge out of their utility and the way that we spend them and our relationship with them will start to sort of classify them and that there won't be just one. There won't be well, what's yeah, going to yeah. emerge as the cryptocurrency. It's not it's not like that. You know, so I think when we stop thinking about it like that, we'll start to appreciate Bitcoin for what it is, Bitcoin cash for what it is. Um, you know, even something like Ripple, which obviously is not a cryptocurrency um, itself, but like, you know, things like this that, you know, you can kind of hate on them or, or have opinions on them. We'll see them for what they are and we'll appreciate them for their utility or we will pass them by completely forever um, if they if there's no utility present whatsoever. Right. But it seems like, though, I mean, the argument of competition, there's going to be better like coins or cryptocurrencies with more or less utility. And I was just thinking about like for example the the one the issue about the energy usage or that frivolity aspect of bitcoin i mean when something else comes along like say ethereum or something that does not have that shortcoming wouldn't it simply like in the competition of good ideas the the worst idea kind of starts dropping off or or you don't see it that way cuz it seems like seems like for for some of the design reasons of bitcoin seems like it would be dropping off just in a in a marketplace of good ideas like just competition from other other cryptocurrencies let's say um i mean jack or is there some fun yeah i I mean i think really i think the thing so i think the thing for everyone to remember when we're talking about um, these different projects is like yeah. if you like scroll out of it, like if you zoom out and you like look at planet Earth from far away, like mm. put a little red dot everywhere where there's someone who's actually even like like technically like capable of working on these kinds of projects. It's like relative to the number of people who are interested in these kinds of projects, it's actually a pretty small group of people. So mm-hmm. I think um, you know what you see when you see something like the fork. Um, of, you know, from Bitcoin, and you know, you look at some of the conversations that are happening about, like, you know, is Bitcoin, uh, you know, doomed? Is Bitcoin Cash going to emerge? You know, and you know, did they fix the problems? All of that talk. Um, you know, we have to remember that you know these are all projects that are still alive, and that you know, the changes can be made. You know, there's nothing's like forever, forever. And mm-hmm. the group of people, the pool of people who are working um, on these projects, building off the blockchain, off across all of these different uh, projects and companies, it's it's a pretty limited group of people when you really look at it so they talk you know if you're recruiting in this space which i am um you know that they talk like you know people uh, sort of peek at each other across projects people contribute to other open source projects um and so i think that the spread of ideas and the uh, capability of people to bring innovative thought um to projects that have got you know uh, problems for instance you you mentioned ethereum you know with their scalability issues um, you, you know, Bitcoin obviously has, has seen its troubles. Uh, you know, certain people within Bitcoin uh, community, you know, tried to exercise their voice. Uh, you know, they weren't heard or they didn't feel heard or there was disagreement. Um, so they exercised their ability to exit. But all of that, if you just look at it, like mm. it creates the opportunity for further innovation and for something like Bitcoin, um, you know, to continue to improve upon itself um, and, you know, live on forever. I mean, look at everything that's been forked off of Bitcoin. 
You know what I mean? Can something really die if everything that's alive around it, like, comes from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so... We should talk a little bit about content, too. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 talk about... But maybe, maybe last question. Last question on economics. So are you guys actually kind of basically living off like you're actually generating value or is it still like investment money or are you guys actually generating value from the the actual work itself in other words are you sustainable at this point well yeah so i mean really we are and like i said like we've got a ton of runway you know we're adding people to the team we're definitely looking for more blockchain developers if um you know anybody uh, anybody on this team or who ends up you know hearing about this conversation later wants to uh, have that conversation, uh, visit us at uh, lbry.io. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like it, we have a lot of runway from the coin that we've sold. We've done a very good job, um, you know, making good decisions and, you know, gauging the market as well as anybody can and, you know, making moves at, at pretty great times. We've had some really great timing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that comes from the value that is built by the work that's being put right. in by our development team, right. um, as well as by the, the uh, interest that is generated uh, in the um uh, content by the content uh, that we put on the network and the, the kinds of creators that we uh, yeah, yeah. bring on board to be creators on the network. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that sounds cool. Excellent. So let's talk about yeah, talk about content. Like, how can we uh, participate in this? Yeah. I mean, so we're more than happy um, to have um, your content on the network for sure. Um, I know you have a number of uh, videos on YouTube. Um, it sounds to me, you know, like there could uh, be the potential for you down the line, maybe, um, to participate. Uh, um, uh, well, let me actually ask you that question. I don't want to fill in blanks for you. Wh- how is it that you think you could best utilize the the library network beyond just putting uh, beyond just putting your content there? Um, I don't know. Besides, I mean, so yeah, use it as a as a place to put videos on basically this the centralized way to do that outside of youtube that's awesome um I'm not sure what else i'm not sure about what exists right now to make an informed decision at this point just don't know enough about it right now yeah. but what what are okay. some of the I things you'd, to... you'd suggest what are what are some good and en- good other uses um well i mean you know i don't i i'm i'm can currently be used for uh you know file distribution in general um Videos, videos play, uh, you know, there's a player for videos, and that's what the primary use case is. But mm-hmm. you can just as easily publish text or, you know, CAD files or whatever else. Um, yeah, I mean, well, so, the, so, yeah. so Jack, um, well, and, and this is the part like, where I didn't want to guess, but it seems to me, based on research that I've done and the conversation that I had with Lex, like, um, like you guys potentially like do you actually store like do you have like schematics like like who's building things you know what I mean like how does that how does that work like do you have that maybe just describe some of those things outside of just video like describe some of the things that you've got in the way of files um, uh, like that that you distribute and and you know the way that that you use them I'm a bit um, I can I can kind of pipe in here since I'm kind of on both at the same time. Uh, uh-huh. One of the, one of the issues I mean I've had this conversation with Jack and Jeremy back when I was being hired uh, about OSC and and the uh, the CAD files and stuff. One of the issues with um, uh, with library for that specific thing is that uh, since you're 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 um, you're paying to have a name on the network, right? Like you're uh, it, it makes sense for content that's actually going to be consumed. But CAD files, especially with different versions, um, if nobody's downloading it or if, or if uh, it, it's well, not, just... you're not guaranteed to be able to get all of the versions back, right? Like it's not as reliable as uh, uh, as, a, as a more non decentralized uh, uh, storage. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, well, uh, it doesn't. So when you make a claim, uh, you're not spending credits out to someone else they they remain yours uh it's just that so long as they're being used for that claim, so, so long as that claim remains resolvable um that's you know what they're being used for and if you decide to spend them into you know general circulation so to speak or you know uh abandon the claim um you abandon the claim so um basically 
when you're using them for claims, uh, you know, you're you're just withholding their use for anything else. Um, right, they're just tied up. So, uh, but it, you know, that doesn't require very much unless you want to have the winning resolution, which is the you know, highest amount reserved for that name. Uh, winning resolution means that when you look up the name alone, that is the claim that is returned. Um, if, when, when there's multiple claims for the same name, you have to specify. Yeah, I think all of this stuff makes more sense for content, not necessarily CAD files. I think I think for CAD files, you probably want something um, faster, a little more, you know, like uh, more cataloged or more of a database. Um, I think when I when I was thinking of the library and, and OSC collaboration, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, promotion. So OSC and library can library can promote each other, and then uh, we can maybe a library can even generate some of the content is for OSC. So like I was talking to Jack before about doing maybe a podcast or something. Um, so library needs more content, right? And if we can find a way where we can generate some of the content, you know, without too much effort, uh, and th then both projects can benefit from it. So that's kind of where I was I was uh, approaching it. I'm not sure if, if storing CAD files on library is, is, is the, uh, the best way to use library or the best way to, to do the collaboration. But definitely importing all of Marchin's YouTube videos into library is the way to go. And then the second option uh, was was to maybe do, you know, kind of do some kind of show um, podcast or video or, or something. I mean, in Manchester, we have the uh, library offices right next to the makerspace. So there are opportunities mm -hmm. there for, for something. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that was one of the one of the goals I was hoping for this. Uh, this meeting is to maybe just explore it or discuss it. Really, um, what are the options there in terms mm -hmm. of uh, library uh, creating content with um, OSC? Um, I mean, so like, sort of describe the content for me. Like, you know, who goes to see your uh, videos? How many people typically go to see them? How many people typically um, subscribe uh, are subscribed to you? I know I checked this out, and then, then I just well, one of the content that we haven't done. Uh, very much of is like tutorials and, and instructional videos and, and those kinds of things. So that's going to be uh, generate a lot of uh, video and audio. So that's that's one thing that we can put up. And then the second one that also hasn't been done yet is like a podcast or, or a, a show uh, once a week or once a month or however makes sense. So so there's actually the, the current videos are, are a lot of these meetings and then Martin does um, you know cool videos of, of different things he's working on. Um, but there isn't something that's like, other than the weekly meetings, there isn't something that's scheduled and that people can subscribe to and, and, and do that sort of thing. So that's, that's kind of open for, for the collaboration. That's something we can create and come up with the, and, and put on library and, you know, get people, uh, you know, who are, who get people to go to library and find out about OSC. And then also people who know about OSC will find out about a show on library. Yeah. What are the storage limitations? I mean, you have tons and tons of YouTube stuff, videos. Uh, what are the costs and are there costs involved? What, what are those costs? Um, so uh, currently, um, you know, it, there, it would depend on how many people are downloading it. Um, we also will re-host content that gets uploaded, um, but obviously we can't do that indefinitely. Um, so... Not exactly sure how much, how much, how much, how much video are you thinking? Well, isn't it supposed to be? I mean, it, we're, we should well, be yeah, able to handle any amount, right? Amount. I mean, the theory, yes, well, yeah, it's arbitrary. Right. Um, Distributed, so. As the upper, so the sort of the upper bound practically um, is that people also need to be watching it in order for it to be rehosted, um, or there have to be people who are rehosting it. So. Um, mm -hmm. We've got so data is not necessarily. Uh, free is something that is, you know, built into a protocol. Um, as in, you could be charging a price for it that's negotiated, and that would provide incentive to seed something that is in, that's accessed very infrequently. Um, so you, you can imagine that you see this with torrent files, where you can have uh, basically kilobytes or you know a couple megabytes of data, but it isn't available for days and days and days until one particular seed comes online who has it. Um, and so uh, data having a price can prevent that. Um, but currently, we have, you know, the default data price is zero. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, as things progress, uh, hosts should, you know, we'll be hosting less ourselves as, uh, you know, other hosts, 
pop up and they'll presumably not be only providing free content that they'll also be charging some you know, small rate for it mm -hmm. so what would be the first step i mean download so download the app this is the thing you download and start using that yep or you can uh yeah that and speech although speech is experiencing problems right now actually mm -hmm. now, do we have automated tools right to import stuff from youtube yes yeah we have a youtube sign up page um on i'm not sure exactly what the link is do you know natalie the YouTube, the YouTube link to get? You mean the, the, the get link? To sync? Uh, yeah, that one. The one where they yeah. Yeah, sync their channel. Yeah, so if you go, hold on one moment. Let me go here. So, okay, and then the other, the other thing is uh, creating content, right? Um, is that something uh, that would make sense or... or uh, I mean, I, like, like that I would really have to know more about. Like, I, I'm very interested um, in, and I haven't had the opportunity to do so since we uh, first uh, spoke of this, Lex, but I'm very interested to go and check out some of these videos, um, not only because I'd like to see what kind of videos you're making, um, but also because I'm extremely interested in the project. It uh, definitely um, speaks to a large part of my um, psyche and sort of my mission as a person, you know, even beyond what I do here at Library um, in life. So I am I'm definitely keen on figuring that out. But like, do you guys have content goals? Do you typically just like set up a camera and talk? Um, you know, do you have any kind of like schedule or calendar around the kinds of pieces that you do? Do you talk to other people? Like, what is it really like? No, right now it's really ad hoc. The thing that I wanted to get regular is a good podcast where we're interviewing and discussing important topics on a more regular basis. Yeah, I mean, so far it's it's not it's not regular at all. Uh, just a lot of lot of just work in progress stuff. There's some sprinkled with some decent decent videos here and there, but it's yeah. I wouldn't say it's regular at this point. Um. Okay. Um, I mean, so when it comes to hmm. so I'm 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 trying to choose words. Um, that convey my interest in continuing the conversation around content and the possibility that um, you know we could participate in some way um, in you know uh, the creation of content or or you know promoting content or possibly connecting you with someone else um, you know who would be a good connection for you um, around content uh, creation or you know partnership of some some sort that would make sense for for both you and you know another one of our uh, sort of our network. Uh, publishers um, but at this point in time I'm like two and a half three minutes away from needing to jump uh, onto another call so I don't want to like start that conversation and then shut it down know what I mean because I'm definitely interested in having that conversation and viewing some things that you think are um, you know at least uh, reflective of the kind of information that you like to uh, put out in your your um, content and then you know maybe talk a little bit more about like what your vision is around that plan mm-hmm yeah okay does that make sense like like does it make sense yeah, it does, for it does. us to set up like a, a part two to, to sort of like dig a little bit deeper around content that's i think so i i'd say that that would be a good thing um i'm trying to pull up uh, it's funny the videos page on our website just disappeared just recently but okay um Lex, maybe, do you want to just uh, fill Natalie in with on, just maybe send her a bunch of good links to some of the top videos and think about that and... Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I could also brainstorm some content ideas and whatnot too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And beyond well, that, I mean... I just posted a link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, like, uh, I mean, regarding just transferring the YouTube thing, I'm trying to get a better idea of the practicality of that, I mean... Yeah. Um, no, so I just posted a link in the comments here yeah. um, to our YouTube page. So um, uh, that so that is the pre-redesign. So please do not judge us for our branding there. I'm, I'm letting you have this link mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that you can go and, and you can investigate, um, you know, syncing your, your YouTube channel uh, to the library network. But um, just know that if I'd given you that link um, like a couple of weeks from now, it would have been... It would have led you to a gorgeous page with 
beautiful UI UX and, and mm -hmm. easy to use uh, buttons and you know all kinds of cool stuff like that. But yeah, so bear, bear with us as far as that's concerned, but the utility is there. It's just a, it's a very simple process. There's a sync button. Um, you know, because there is a personal relationship here and, you know, we're definitely interested in sort of ongoing conversations with you, um, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, we would definitely, um, if you had any, you know, if you wanted to uh, do anything differently, if you wanted, you know, tips and tricks, anything like that, we would be more than willing to um, talk with you before you did that, um, you know, and help you uh, figure out how to uh, get it done faster. Right. So, so, I mean, is that like leave YouTube for good? I mean, is that a, a practical no, thing? No, like that just, it sinks, it sinks your content to mm -hmm. the um, to the library network. It does not in any way um, uh, change uh, the way that you're doing business with, with YouTube currently. Mm-hmm. And it was the idea that, like, at some point we we start referring people to to library as as the place where they watch our videos, or it still still goes back to YouTube. Yeah, I mean, you can go, um, you know, you could you could tell people uh, to go to YouTube to view your content, or you could tell them, um, you know, to view it on the library app. At this point in time, um, you know, on one speech. of the it can also be accessed on speech as an alternative to YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what I was going to say. At this point in time, one of the barriers to, like, the entirety of your following, uh, you know, following you to the library network um, and viewing everything that you make there is going to be that some people just aren't going to download the app. You know, they're just not going to for whatever reason. Um, but, uh, you know, people can also go and, and sort of web viewer style, um, you know, to put it in terms that are oversimplified again, but uh, go to speech, which is S-P-E-E -E dot C-H, um, and they can... They could, you know, we could work with you to get your content so that they could view it there. So then, then it's just a link that you're sharing. Uh, but the, you know, the the opportunity there that I do have to jump. But the the opportunity here really is is this. It gives you the opportunity to say, hey, here's my content. You know, come look at it here. Um, but again, because of the project that you're working on, you know, sort of, I believe anyway, being in line with this idea of, you know, creative, you know, creative open source collaboration around ideas that matter. Um, I think it's a great marketing opportunity for you to say, hey, we're on the blockchain. Um, you know, it's decentralized and it's, you know, it's, it's creator controlled. The project is open source. You can feel good about coming to see this here. Um, we don't, you know, we're trying to move away from participation with this highly centralized, um, you know, passive mechanism that doesn't actually feed the community that feeds it, the content that makes it the ad revenue mm -hmm. that pays their bills, right? Um, so you can put it on this, this network instead and that can be a part of how you promote, say, the podcast you want to get up and running. Um, you know what I mean? It's crypto is kind of hot right now. People are talking about it. Um, you know, so that can be a cool uh, thing for people to say, "Hey, we're trying this out. Come try it out with us." Okay, sounds good. I I think I've got some questions. I think Lex can probably answer a bunch of them. Just like technicalities of how this this works, because um, sure. Yeah, but yeah, let's let's chew on this. And do we want to set up another meeting for the future, or Lex? What, what do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts? I, w I would like to. I would really get, like to get a sense for what your your uh, goals are moving forward from a content standpoint. And I would like really just like die to hear you talk a little bit about um, your process and you know how you came into um, you know this point uh, in the project. I'm wildly excited about what it is that you have going on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let's um, let's continue this on um, a follow up on on email then, and let's go from there. Does that sound good? Uh, that sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Fellas, sure. I really uh, appreciate that you spent so much time with us. And Lex, thanks so much for inviting us. All right. Okay, thanks Natalie, Jack, and Lex for organizing it. We'll, we'll see each other soon. Thank okay. you very much. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.